okay, so throw your hands in the air. And we even like you just don't care. I just had to say that again. I, I just had to do that. I just had to do that. I just did. I just did. Uh, Roxanne. Yeah? How you doing? I'm absolutely great. So, you said that Ty could out-talk everybody. Absolutely. What did you mean, and how did that help your career? Honestly, one of the things about when you have a manager that not only is able to articulate, but also takes the time out to give us instructions and tell us, like, listen, you need to be able to speak for yourself in case I'm not there. So what you see today is a product of Tyrone Williams because I'm able to talk and can't nobody out talk. <laughs> what do you remember about the night? You know, it was obviously a classic night, you know. Is there anything that comes to mind when you see the footage? The first thing I remember is during the day, earlier that day, um, walking up and down, and this is for anybody that lives in the Harlem era who knows about the 80s, how we would walk 7th and 8th Avenue. And I remember having on 5411s. Okay, absolutely. Having on 5411s and actually walking past and seeing our names up on the marquee and thinking to myself like, wow, I'm out here walking around today, going to Willie Burger, stopping in a few other places, but I'm gonna be at the Apollo tonight. And that was the same feeling that I got tonight. Like literally standing on the side of the stage, I was telling one of the stagehands, I was like, you know, I still get that same feeling just being in the Apollo. But honestly, you get that feeling being uptown. It's something about Harlem that makes you say, you know what, I'm here. And I need them to know that I'm here. So it was all about the way you dress and, and the way you speak. And you know, just you, you just came out here to show up and show out. And so yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, where was your career at during that time? Well, during the time, um, I, had just, I had just had my son who happens to be here tonight. You know, I had just had my son and um, we were trying to figure out where does Roxanne and Shantae fit in to where hip hop is going. So we know that, you know, as you can see from the video, the first thing I said was I took a lot of pride in having a nasty mouth. But I think at that time I called it a nasty mouth, but now I understand that it was just the talent of being able to freestyle and being ready for a battle at any time. You know, so I kind of called it a nasty mouth, but really it was just about being prepared for anybody at any time. You know, and um, we were trying to figure out where did I belong? You know, was I supposed to be commercial? Was I still gonna be just Roxanne Shantae? You know, where was I going in that direction? And, I, and I'm honest, like, honestly, I'm able to say now, I am so glad of the direction that we chose for me because now it has allowed me to have seven million listeners per day on the radio. You know, thank you. It has allowed me to have a movie, Roxanne, Roxanne, which has been viewed over 80 million times on, on Netflix. You know, so just coming here to the Apollo and taking certain steps and being on Cold Chilling and having Tyrone not just as a manager but as a father figure and giving you that direction and that discipline, I must say that I'm truly thankful. And everyone out here, give yourselves a round of applause because you made the right choice too. Because you're here tonight. Now you were you were you were talking a little bit about the lineage in, in the footage that was just there, right? Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about that? How did how did everyone come together? You talked about shame and then you know everyone kind of finding each other and coming to cold chilling. You talk about that. I think you know if we have to think where, where it all starts from, it starts from Marley Mall and it starts from his living room. And it starts from him being able to say, because you come across so so much talent. You know, we grew up in Queensbridge Public Housing, which is the largest housing project in the world. No, no, no. Absolutely. Queensbridge. Please believe me, baby. You know, and so growing up, there is so much talent. It was Marlon who actually took the direction of music. And he would see who was supposed to be as far as like, who was going to be the next one. So he really chose that. So we're very thankful for that. And I'm sorry, I want to say something. You know, you talk about the direction she went and whatever. This child, when we first went out on the road, she was 14 years old. Okay, I was worried because we, um, we had our other artists, Fearless Four and L.A. Sunshine of the Fearless, of the Treacherous Three, 
yes. and Fearless Four, uh, Mike C, they wrote a script for her to try to tell her how to do whatever she's supposed to do. Well, we did the show, she did nothing they taught her. <laughs> she did absolutely nothing. And what I saw in this little, Shante was like this, backstage, she got her thumb in her mouth like she's eight years old. When she hit that stage, Roxanne and Shante would come out. And you ever see somebody that's just built for this? She was just built for it. She could do, I've, I've seen hundreds of Roxanne and Shante shows and never seen the same one twice. And I mean, she, she, went, she suffered a lot of scars because she was so hot and so big that she had to do R&B shows. And the R&B acts, the one I said, she was 14. And these grown ass people would say, I ain't going on before that bitch. <laughs> I'm, and she's a baby. And you know, I would try to shield her from it and not let her hear it. If she heard it, God be with her upset. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Because she would get on stage, she would tear him up. But Shante, the talent was always there. She just had to cultivate it and grow. And she was around talented people. You know, she's on that radio. I hear Mr. Magic and all. Absolutely. Because she grew up on the radio with, with Mr. Magic. So, Roxanne Shante, very talented girl. I call her my daughter. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Roxanne. One of the most talented. One of the most amazing freestylers, too. I don't think people, I think they think you're writing everything. No, you know I, what I, mean? I, you know what it is? I think it's, just, it's a blessing of being able to just, I live life and I take it as it comes, and so I deliver it as it comes. Thank you. You know how Shante used to do records? Real quick. Shante coming to the studio. I said, Shante, make a record by how you got started. She just start rapping, five minutes, and leave. And the reason she had to leave, because she always, she lived, the laundromat was between her house and the studio. So she always had to do her laundry, her mother's laundry. Her mother said she could do it, but she got to do this laundry. So she would always come to the studio with the laundry, the cart, and her little sister, and she would do this, this, this song, and find one take, and leave. Crazy. We love you, Roxanne. We're going to see some more of you in a minute. Let's go to this next clip.